Hi guys, today I'm going to discuss uh, clinical management about one patient which I have uh, previously seen in my rheumatology uh, department. Uh, it's not about the diagnosis, it's more about a clinical management. Uh, so this case is uh, inflammatory myositis. Uh, I actually joined this trust in the middle of the October when initially I was uh, contacted by my rheumatology specialist nurse in the second week. So this patient was previously uh, visiting our department with the diagnosis of statin-induced myositis in 2019. And since 2019, she was prescribed on azathioprine uh, 150 mg daily. And she was on a prednisolone 15 mg since 2020. So uh, in the second week of the October, I was contacted, as I mentioned, through my rheumatology uh, specialist nurse. They'd uh, asked if this patient has uh, recently got some weakness. And the GP actually contacted this, that this patient is going to have a flare of the myositis. Uh, so then I have suggested, when I looked the system, patient was not in my room, there was no appointment. It was just my second week in this trust. So when I looked in the system before responding, so this is my way to, you know, respond any of the email, any correspondence, and it was even an email, not a phone call or not a written paper. It was just an email. It was a good email by the nurse who actually previously looked few times. So let me just open this. So I opened the, you know, clinical letters. I have got the understanding this patient have this, uh, as per previous letters that the statin-induced myositis, HMG CoA reductase was positive, this and this, and patient was okay. Uh, there was a few CK initially in 2019, which I'm hoping to attach in my letter. So, but later on, I can say, what is this? This is CK, oh, this is CRP, sorry guys. I'm just lost somewhere else. So anyway, so when I looked the system and I looked the blood test and then I responded to the my rheumatology nurse that you can go back to from 15 mg prednisolone to 40 mg prednisolone. Now you guys in Pakistan always just write Delta Cortel 3 plus 3 plus 3. The problem in Ireland and UK is we don't write 3 plus 3 plus 3. We used to, because again, there is no pharmaceutical or drug companies here. So we always write prednisolone, either 10 milligram, 20 milligram, 30 milligram. So each table is a 5 mg. So automatically the pharmacies and everyone know about the dose. And most of the time we prescribe a cumulative single dose after breakfast. So I asked my nurse to go back on a 40 mg just to ask the GP to start 40 mg. And she can stay on the prayer as a thioprene until I review in a four weeks time. Every week she should have a liver function test, CK, and just to monitor the blood sugars. And I will see in a four week time. Then what happened after uh, one week that she actually uh, came to the hospital emergency. I, I got the information from one of the on-call consultant. The consultant sent me an email. It was uh, the last week of October that this patient came with a significant weakness and the weakness was generalized uh, until I have seen. So I got the information from that email that patient is significantly sick. She has a significant flare. And uh, so they asked me to review uh, as face-to-face -face in the ward. I'm sorry, I'm going to put this uh, CK result just in the, you know, in my blood portion. I'm not actually retrieving. I hope I can do now. Just because I want to give you the idea what was the CK when initially nurse contacted me. So yes, so I was contacted around 18th of October. Uh, yeah, but uh, I could not have information about what was the CK. But in 9th September, the patient CK was 666, so triple six. 
and then this patient got admission around 18 i think patient got admission around 18 to 27th october but patient is a blood test and the ck was 2900 and then 3700 3700 is a peak on 27 october which i correlate that time when i examined so patient is a weakness of two by five in all the muscles of upper limb proximal myopathy she was hardly to move on the bed Luckily, there was no cardiovascular, uh, you know, involvement uh, and no respiratory uh, involvement. She is a slightly dysphagic, but uh, overall, that was a stable, you know, cardiorespiratory functions. So obviously, then with this picture, I started on uh, methylprednisolone, uh, a standard one gram for three days. And for this patient, uh, because patient is 80 year old, she was woman. She is woman, she is still alive, luckily. So, uh, methylprednisolone, one gram, three days, uh, and uh, immunoglobulins, uh, IVIG, for this patient as per the dose uh, for three days, divided dose for three days. Obviously, they used to check here, ESR was high, CRP was high, which hopefully I can attach the ESR CRP. They were moderately high, between 50 to 100. There was no chest infection, urine infection, so so the patient was cleared, uh, there's no infection. So um, after three days of this pulse therapy, to be honest, even I went uh, after one to two days, not exactly after third day, so like fourth and fifth day, patient was walking in the room. So you can imagine patient was hardly moving in the bed. And now after this cycle of the IV prednisolone and immunoglobulins, patient was walking in the room. She was tired, fatigue, but she was walking in the stick. So you see the, the improvement of this. Obviously, people can give cyclophosphamide, we can give rituximab, but my choice, uh, depending upon the whole scenario, picture, the age is 80, risk of infections, risk of COVID, and risk of sustaining such a medication as well, immunosuppressive. So from methylprednisolone, I tapered, means I started to 60 mg oral prednisolone. After three days of uh, IVIG, obviously she was stopped the uh, azathioprine on the admission because this is one of the important thing again, the ALT was around 300 to 400, all the acute medicine doctors, even GPs, and all other people think about this is due to the liver transaminitis but in myositis the alt ast can be raised which does not mean this is truly uh, oriented or originated from the liver damage it's due to the muscle damage so they were investigating i say th- I, I told them okay you can do investigation whatever you want but there's no problem now the management can be picked or you can have a uh, whatever the choice depending upon the patient age comorbidities and you know the future you know looking of because of the current situation there is a flu risk there is a infection risk there is a covid risk so in this perspective i choose to steroid taper down from 60 and start the mycophenolate uh, i started 500 mg for 15 days again 500 mg bd for next 15 days and 500 for next 15 days. And I was tapering prednisolone 60 mg for one month and 50 mg for one month and 40 mg. So every monthly like 10 mg. So uh, as I mentioned you, the peak of the CK on 27 October was 3700. On 1st November, it was 2800. On 4 November, it is 19, it was 1900. 21st November, 800. 15th December 300 and just two days ago it is 67 so she's on mycophenolate 500 mg TDS and she's on prednisolone 40 milligram but what happened unfortunately she was supposed to be in my clinic in the first week of the uh, January but she got the flu uh, end of the December and she got the COVID and at the moment Unfortunately, she has a chest infection, so she is hospitalized. So, uh, mycophenolate is off and prednisolone is 40 mg, but CK 67, that's completely fine. So, in this whole scenario from October to this time, she got a one urinary tract infection and that was treated with antibiotics. 
Now the question is why I not went for cyclophosphamide because age 80, the risk of infection, myelosuppression, but more about the infection risk. She could die with the infection, which I don't want. Rituximab, again, COVID and infection, I hold it. I was giving, but I hold it. Now I'm hoping every three month IVIG, three days immunoglobulins, you can give monthly, one dose, but I'm going three monthly, three doses. CK is normal, obviously with the infection, she's diet, but she's okay. So a steroid will going down and down. Uh, mycophenolate is okay, 1500 mg divided doses, but I'm going to give one gram BT. But yes, infection risk is there, but uh, obviously you have to pick, uh, you know, different management in the different patients. I could have started methotrexate with the steroid. That's a fair idea. And again, I'm saying just to add on that every rheumatologist can differ this. And this is just my experience. It doesn't mean that this regimen is from each rheumatologist. No. Some people prefer the methotrexate oral or subcutaneous. That's a fair idea. But because as I mentioned, the ALT was high, GP and no other doctor, even I convinced no one can start methotrexate. They always think about the ALT which is obviously a muscle drive, but they think it is due to the liver origin. So uh, methotrexate can be given safely, cyclophosphamide and rituximab, and this is the mycophenolate. Now azathioprine is gone. Obviously on azathioprine, this patient developed this. So uh, what other investigation I have done? Unfortunately, in our trust, there's no muscle biopsy, but uh, so I did an MRI. So what MRI shows acute myositis involving the rotator cuff musculature as well as the triceps musculature. Uh, and then patchy muscle edema involving the hip girdle musculature as well as thigh musculature bilaterally. Appearances would be in keeping with acute myositis. So this MRI was done on uh, 11th November, obviously when she was inpatient. Um, now, once he is stable, I will, you know, um, obviously we did a CT thorax abdomen pelvis for the malignancy check. All the other immune panels, which I have seen, there is nothing positive, no myositis. Like all these antibodies are negative. So unfortunately, we did not went for the biopsy, but CK raised. She was previously statin induced myositis and... Um, with the clinical picture and a good response. So I'm treating uh, idiopathic inflammatory or myositis, more likely a polymyositis, but I will still go for other malignancy checks like a tumor markers, mammography, and you know, something which is, is still left to check because obviously sometime when we see the myositis, the elderly people, there is always to rule out the malignancy underlying. So this is all about a clinical management. I'm hoping to attach the pictures, which is very difficult for me, you know, to avoid all the patient names, labels and everything because of um, strict confidentiality. So this is all about this patient management in terms of the myositis. If this is a younger patient, obviously I could go for cyclophosphamide or versus rituximab. Uh, depending upon the, like as a young woman, obviously we use not to go cyclophosphamide because of the risk of the ovarian failure. We still go if they're life-threatening. Uh, there's no strict avoidance that you can't go it. Uh, there is a treatment in, uh, you know, in that category, you have to, you know, keep. Uh, I'm not sure what we give, but there is a medication to give to keep the ovarian failure, you know. some Not all people have ovarian failure if the young women but there is a still chances. So rituximab usually is safe in the younger population, but methylprednisolone is, is the one of the urgent and important. But in this situation, I would say the IVIG immunoglobulins also did a remarkable improvement. Uh, that's the good thing. Okay, guys, thank you. Take care.